Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. So in parts one and two, we went through the components of stress. We looked at hoop stresses and, and uh, stress intensification factors and all these components. We're gonna wrap this up and get to the final end here. So but we, all we have left is we've got thermal expansion stress to look at, and it's restrained and unrestrained. Longitudinal stresses, strained and unrestrained. And then we'll wrap it up with combining of these stresses together. So we're going to look at section 402.5, stress from thermal expansion. And B31 Ford divides stresses into two categories, unrestrained and restrained, and uses thin wall uh, theory for, for these equations. So the first part will be restrained. The second part will be unrestrained. Okay, we're going to look at thermal expansion, the restrained case. Now, what's an example of a restrained case? That's the classical one is a buried uh, pipeline where the, the soil on the ground is preventing the, the pipeline from, um, you know, flexing. And this is considered to be the, the highest um, case where you're going to see the highest expansion stresses. Now, we're going to look at 4.02, 5.1, because that directly ag uh, addresses this issue. Note that this thermal expansion will put uh, compression on the pipe. So this is important when we're combining all these components together. So the thermal expansion st stress classically is, is that's the symbol for it. And it's given by this very, very fundamental equation. Uh, of, of stress on a fully restrained pipe. So this is where we take the modulus of elasticity. And if you remember from the first videos uh, in this series, uh, it's borrowed from 402 uh, to 2. And this is a fixed value, OK? And uh, have a look at that section. And the installation temperature is very important. A lot of, of, of when we, we do our checking, we find that the installation temperature is not clearly understood. It's the point where the, the final components are all put together and the pipe is basically locked up and it's ready to go. OK, so uh, the defaults on some of the programs like Caesar set that at 21 degrees. But if you're setting this up outside in the wintertime, this is uh, becomes a big deal. So be very careful of, of your installation temperature and ask questions when the, when the unit is going to be installed. Operating temperature, uh, we typically we've been using the upper maximum temperature that's recommended. But of course, this is up to engineering judgment. Now, coefficient of thermal expansion. This is, has a fixed value for carbon steels, just like elastic modulus. And you would go to 402.21. And they want you to do that so that um, the design is more you know, consistent. The next one is called the thermal unrestrained case. And this is where the pipe is free to, or the piping system is free to expand without any resistance. Um, this, of course, is not really ever going to happen. Um, but it's Im important to know the two extremes of fully restrained and unrestrained because they, they, they help the designer understand the, what the conditions. So basically, this is from 4.0 or 402, 5.2 unrestrained pipe. And it includes flexibility and stress intensification factors where the other one doesn't because the pipe is fully re restrained and the flex and the flexibility factors uh, come into play um, with with the stress intensification factors so here we go 
So this is the equation, the band. The, so there's the stress from bending and there's torsional bending, and that's how you do your expansion stress. So here we go. So the resultant bending stress is calculated yet from another equation, which is really just a classic bending stress equation, M, MC over I, where they just use Z to simplify that in a sort of a st structural steel type of equation. So, so basically, uh, I is an in-plane um, SIF factor that we talked about in, the la in, in part two, which is from table 402. Then we have the outer plane, which is from 402. So this would be things like uh, if you have um, elbows, but you know, for, for straight pipe, it's just 1.0. There's no stress multipliers involved here. And, and this is the bending, uh, in-plane bending moment, okay? Uh, and this, this can be, it's uh, a lot of computers generate this because it is quite a complicated thing to do in, in, in complex systems. And, and the same as this out-of-plane bending stress, okay? And then, of course, the section modulus is a description of, of the flexibility of the pipe. The other one here, is called the torsional stress, okay? And it it often doesn't have play come into play very much, but if you have the torsional stress, then you can divide that by two times the section modulus and you can come up with the torsional stress and then you can you can have your thermal expansion stress equation. Okay, we're going to look at section 402.6 diving into the longitudinal stress. Same thing as the thermal expansion stress. There is a set of equations for restrained and for unrestrained. So if we recall back to where we were before, uh, in the last presentation, we introduced, you know, the, the different types of stresses you find a pipe, the pressure components, the longitudinal stress, and, and the hoop stresses. And we've already completed looking at the hoop stresses in the previous presentation. Now we're going to dive into the longitudinal stress equations. Longitudinal stress is restrained pipe, part one. So, the longitudinal stress equations are bored from 402.6.1. Now, this is the equation. As you can see, there's some assembly required. First of all, we got we to gotta put in our expansion stress, which is one of our components. And then our, from our previous videos, we did the hoop stress. And then for the case of restraint, we have to multiply that by Poisson's ratio. And we have the bending stress, which is the fourth element followed by by the four axial forces okay so a is taken as the nominal um, metal pipe cross section okay so basically nominal means the the new value of the pipe that's what that's what uh, asked me is asking for okay so sometimes we take we, we're not sure about that but we're, we're working with new for flexibility analysis. So then we have the force, axial force, which is which is shown there. Now, what is the axial force? Axial force, a classic example, is a vertical riser, and you have to include the weight of the pipe on top of the, say, the elbow at the bottom. For example, there, there's a, a weight a component to this. Another one is the bending moment. If, say, for example, the, the pipe is being bent around a corner or something, or, or, or it's on grade on a hill and it's going over the hill, then there'll be some bending stress because of the contour. Another one is uh, the thermal expansion, which we talked about earlier. And if, to get the details, we go to, to uh, section 402.5. And another one here is the circumferential hoop stress due to internal pressure. It can also be uh, due to external pressure as well, but um, this is the case. So, so if you want the internal pressure, you go to 402.3 or you can go to 4 uh, or, or 0.4 for the other equation. 
And the, finally, we wrap it up with the section modulus of elasticity, uh, section modulus for the pipe. Now the unrestrained pipe equations for longitudinal stresses, like the restrained room, their restrained calculations require some assembly. So it's just uh, it's the part two of of point six, and basically there's an equation given for imperial and another one for metric, as you can see there. And once again, uh, this is a nominal metal pipe cross section. Okay. And then you take the outside diameter of the pipe and you can go to, to ask me for those values. Be careful of, of pipe um, that's, you know, 12 inch uh, and under because um, they have a, 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 a unique outside diameter. Axial force, we talked about that earlier about, you know, weight loads uh, that are preventing the pipe from, from expanding upwards. Say, for example, a vertical riser talked about bending moments the same same concept again and then we talked about in planes uh sif factors and um there th this this there's a there's a condition here to make sure that you don't misapply it uh it's 0.7 times this must be greater than that and remember for straight pipe i is just one you're not intensifying anything with a round pipe and for for guidance on that you go back to uh 402 and part two of our of our videos and uh the wall thickness and i i take that as the nominal wall thickness but of course that's up to the designer to decide and then of course the section modulus which is, is should be all based on on the nominal uh, dimensions of the pipe After all this effort, we're finally going to be combining our stresses together. Now, that's all buried in 4.402.7 for the flexibility analysis where you go and combine all these stresses. So there's actually two fundamental equations, a maximum shear stress theory equation, and you can see the diagram off to the left. Um, there, there, That shows the the range for the stresses okay based on these are the yield stresses okay, of the material and then the other one is called uh, as me allows is the maximum distortion energy theory which is more circular it's more it's a more um uh anyways the distortion energy theory is less conservative than the maximum shear stress theory because you can see how on the edges here it allows for a bigger envelope so it's a more of an accurate equation i rely myself on the energy distortion theory um, there's reasons why von mises is is used especially in classical math and i'll get to that in a, in a moment to the maximum shear stress theory equation there it is right there this is a, a, a classic equation and uh, and basically it takes the components of the longitudinal stresses and the hoop stress and the torsional stresses. What's nice is this, a lot of classical math that uses this equation. This is pre-computer age because you can do some interesting simplification. OK, and it, it's it's actually quite interesting to go through it so that you can un so, so more understand it and come up with like a mental check to make sure their math is correct. So if you assume that the torsion is minimum, the stress due to torsion, which is in 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 my experience, uh, the torsion values I've never seen them high, um, but and for 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 there's several reasons for that, and and so it's it's a safe assumption to go ahead and and make that negligible. So well, then when you're done with all that, you're going to see that this equation can be simplified to a point where you just have the longitudinal stresses minus the hoop stresses. And this is very interesting, but there's a couple more conditions to that. So when, you're, when your, your longitudinal stress is negative, then you, uh, uh, so you, you should be using um, the axial stress minus the hoop stress. And when it, the, the longitudinal stress is positive, then you would follow the equation here, okay, for the axial stress plus the hoop stress. So um, that's sort of a, a rule of thumb, 
okay and that will give you quite a bit give you a, a, an approximation now the maximum uh, distortion energy theory correct me if I'm wrong but I believe a lot of models use this equation because of the age of computers you have more more horsepower crunching and and so this equation is is more um, you can use this for computers and and so this equation is is being used more because it's more it's, it's less conservative it's more accurate so there's the hoop stress values the longitudinal stresses and then the torsional values and that's there all all there is to it you pump those values so the last thing I want to talk about is is uh, stresses from rail rail and road traffic loads and for for some reason they have it in this part of this section I'm not sure I never really understood why but just a few notes so it's called it's in in 402 part 8 and basically there's two groupings you one with casings and one without casings okay so API refers to API uh, 1102 but I've personally used the the, the underground um, uh, loadings from AWWA um, there I, I consider them also good and, and, and API says use or ASME says use this 102 or something equivalent so I've always used that one that's what I'm most familiar with but it's up to you now the, when you have no casing you got to consider the fact that when there's shock loads from from rail cars that the the pipe will experience uh, a shock wave induced by traffic from rails or whatever and it will actually cause uh, an in, increase in st and stress in the system so um, this is why we do things um, so so these these loads can also create loads also on the pipe okay so if these stresses are high and and you need to calculate this because uh, uh, if, especially for shallow situations you can have um, you know shock waves induced into the pipe and so on and so the remedy to that uh, and of course cyclic loadings is 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 to have a casing and so what that does is it fundamentally does is it it, it prevent it uh, eliminates the opportunity of having um, you know surges and in internal pressure and it reduces the cycling on on the actual pipe and and so it puts it the loads onto onto the casing uh, once again uh, you have to analyze the it the casings to API or, or to AWWA whichever which one you want to use and and that's it but this is having a casing that justifies whether you need a casing or not also reasons for casings is it's for better for serviceability uh, especially if you have pipe that wears out I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you this was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. 